Subscribers will know of my recent mountain biking accident where I broke my arm and knocked myself unconscious, so I figured the name Numskulls with the tagline Bones Mend Press Send would be a fitting choice for this design. To create the badge logo design, we'll first start by drawing the vector skull illustration using basic shapes to give the artwork a stylized appearance. I'll then show you some useful tips for creating type on a path effects. Begin drawing the skull with the rectangle tool. Hold shift to form a square. Now a square might be an unusual choice for creating a head shape, but we'll use Illustrator's corner widgets to round off the corners, which is a much faster way of creating custom shapes than it would be to try and use circles and rounded rectangles or freehand with the pen tool. Switch the tool to the white arrow of the direct selection tool and draw a selection across the two upper points of the square. Click and drag one of the little widget icons to max out the corner radius, forming a completely rounded top edge. Select the bottom two points and round them off slightly less, so there's still a straight edge between them. Draw another square shape with the rectangle tool, then overlap it with the first shape to form the jaw of the skull. Select the bottom two points with the direct selection tool and round them off slightly. With the regular selection tool active, shift and click both shapes to select them both, then release the shift key and give the top skull shape an extra click to make it the key object. Open the Align panel and click the Horizontal Align Center button to line the two shapes up. Switch to the Pathfinder panel and click the Unite button to merge the two shapes into one custom shape. If you need to make any adjustments to the sizing of the skull outline, you can move points around with the Direct Selection tool. Any straight lines can be lengthened or shortened by moving groups of points while holding Shift. Find the Arc tool from under the Line Tool menu group Zoom in and find the point at the top of the jaw portion of the skull. If you have Smart Guides enabled, a tooltip will help you snap directly to this point. Draw a curved path while holding Shift. If you need to flip the line the other way around, press the F key before releasing the mouse. Swap to the Pen tool and click on the end point of the curved line to continue the path. Hold Shift and place a point a little further down to extend the path with a straight line. Select the regular selection tool, then click on some empty space to completely deselect everything before selecting the path again. Deselecting and reselecting makes sure you're selecting the entire shape, not just individual points. Go to Object, Transform and Reflect. Make sure the vertical option is checked, then click Copy. Move this duplicate shape into position on the other side of the skull illustration. Select the Line tool, then hold Shift and draw a straight path between the two curved lines. The smart guides make it easy to line the paths up. Switch to the selection tool, then hold Alt and Shift to drag a duplicate of the path. Try and position it with an equal distance. Use the shortcut Command and D or Control and D on Windows to repeat the duplication step to create a few more equally spaced paths. To make sure they're all lined up centrally, first hold Shift and add all the straight lines to the selection, then right click and choose Group. Then shift and click the main skull outline to add it to the selection and give it an extra click to make it the key object. Use the align panel to center up the group of lines. Creating the group first means the lines will be adjusted together rather than them all being placed on top of each other centrally. Then making the skull outline the key object ensures that element won't be moved out of place. Draw one more line horizontally to create a simplistic mouth for the skull. Select the ellipse tool and hold shift to draw a perfect circle as an eye socket. Switch back to the selection tool to alt and drag a duplicate. Position the second circle in line but with the appropriate gap between them. Then shift and click them both and create a group so the eyes can be aligned to the skull outline. To draw a simple nose begin with the star tool. While drawing the shape use the keyboard cursor keys to reduce the number of sides to 3 to create a triangle. Triangles drawn with the star tool conveniently have additional points halfway along each edge. Use the direct selection tool to select and nudge the point on the lower edge upwards slightly. Quickly deselect and reselect the shape with the regular selection tool to make sure the entire shape is selected, not just that single point. Then switch back to the direct selection tool. Click and drag the corner widget to round off the points slightly. Then position this nose shape centrally within the skull illustration. 
Remove any stroke the nose shape might have and replace the fill with black. Give the two eye socket circles the same black fill appearance. Select the main outline path and increase the stroke weight to around 5 points. Then check the align stroke to outside option. Select all the paths that make up the mouth. An easier way to select them than shift and clicking each one is to draw a selection around them all, then uncheck the main outline shape that was captured within the selection. Increase the stroke weight to match, but also add the round cap option since these are open ended paths. Zoom in and correct the positioning so the paths flow seamlessly from the main outline. Continue drawing the crossbones in some empty artboard space. Start with two smaller circles that overlap, then blend them together with the Pathfinder's Unite button. Draw a long thin rectangle as the bone, rotate it slightly and move it into position so it overlaps the circles. Alt and drag a copy of the circles and move it to the other side of the rectangle. Select all three shapes and blend them into one outline with the Pathfinder panel. Make sure this bone shape has a white fill, then drag a copy while holding the ALT key. Zoom in and use the pen tool to draw a zigzagging line across the middle as a crack. Make sure this path has no fill, then select it along with the overall bone shape and click the divide button in the pathfinder panel. Right click and choose ungroup to be able to select and move each half of the broken bone individually. Move the two pieces into place to create broken crossbones. That's the main vector illustration complete, let's decorate it with some text elements. Draw a large circle that contains the illustration with additional space for the text. Remove any fill or stroke colours to make this a plain path. Use the selection tool to add the skull outline to the selection and make it the key object, then centre up the circle. Find the type on a path tool and click the circular outline to begin typing on a path. I'm using one of the fonts from the Adobe Fonts library named Filicudi. Activate it via the link in the description. Bump up the font size and set the paragraph to centre. Then to adjust the positioning of the text, use the direct selection tool to click and drag the little type on a path handle icons. Make any adjustments to the overall size of the type on a path shape before making a duplicate with the edit copy and edit paste in front menus. Double click the text to edit the wording of the duplicate text element. Alter the position using the direct selection tool by dragging the handle to the bottom. In order to align the bottom text with the baseline of the main text, alter the baseline shift value to move the text outwards until it aligns with the path. Make sure the start and end points of your type on a path are spaced far enough apart to allow the whole text to appear without being cropped. Add one extra circle around the entire design to act as a container. Let's bring this design to life with some colour. It's handy to save a backup by drawing a selection around all the elements that make up the design and alt and drag a duplicate to work with elsewhere on the artboard. Select the main outline shape and remove its stroke. Change the fill to a swatch closest to what you're looking for, then make any colour adjustments with the CMYK or RGB sliders. Since this shape was drawn last, it's at the top of the stack, and now it has a fill it's obscuring all the other elements. Right click and choose a range, centre back. Shift and click all the shapes that make the skull illustration, and change the white fills to a yellow colour. Zoom in and change all the black filled shapes and the black stroked paths to the same colour as the background shape. You can use the eyedropper tool to sample it, but don't forget to hold shift to sample just the colour, not the object's full appearance. Select the text elements and give them a brighter fill colour to help them stand out. Finally, if your text and skull shapes overlap in places, make sure the shapes are on top using the arrange bring to front menu. The final result is a classic circular badge style design that would look great as a printed sticker, a pin badge or a brand logo design. Using basic shapes to create the simplified skull illustration not only made it easier to draw, but it gives the artwork a stylized appearance. The type on a path tool is crucial for creating these vintage style badge or emblem layouts to track the text along arcs. Then a simple colour scheme brings the design to life 
especially where the stroke matches the background colour to create a clever negative space effect. If you enjoyed this tutorial or learnt any new tips and tricks, a thumbs up on the video would be really appreciated. Stick around for more of my content by subscribing to the channel and be sure to join my mailing list at Spoon Graphics to download all my free design resources. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.